You're tuning in to Feli's Fishbowl, a marketing podcast for the entrepreneur that wants to create a feel-good business model. On this show, you'll be given the permission slip you've been missing to make that change and start building the business you originally dreamed about. Stick around for solo and interview episodes talking all things content creation and marketing. Sound good to you? Let's dive in. Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome to this week's episode of Feli's Fish Bowl. Today we are diving into my most known for topic, known for topics. <laughs> Could I be any more cheesy? Okay, seriously, at the beginning of 2022, I set myself a goal based on a fellow entrepreneur that I know, and she would challenge herself with focus months. So every two months, she would give herself a new skill to focus on. Her name's Jessie Lim, by the way, if anyone's curious. Um, But I originally found her, I believe she was a brand designer, and now she does a whole lot of like, what she attributes to her success is her focus months and the fact that for two months at a time she will go hardcore on one skill and so beginning of 2022 i was like i want to learn new things without being all over the place i'm going to give myself six tasks for the year six things that i'm going to spend two months on each one focusing and giving myself study hours and working through made it to about june before i fell off (laughs) um But it was a really solid experiment, and I'm going to restart it in the new year with new focus tasks, new skills I want to learn, and I'm going to give myself an actual schedule of like making one day of the week at least have one hour of learning time, because I think that's what I was doing in the beginning, and it worked, but when I moved and started volunteering and didn't have control of my schedule anymore, it fell off, and I have not picked up the habit since. I also changed my mind on some of the skills I set, which is totally fair, but I didn't replace them with new skills that I wanted to learn. So here we are in November and I've changed my skill to podcasting because that's what I'm currently doing. And will I learn all the secrets to podcasting in two months? No, but it's the, it's the, I guess the, the discipline of taking at least an hour out of every week to give yourself time to learn something new. Back to the topic at hand, Known for Topics came about when I was studying SEO. I believe this was my March, April goal. Yeah, I was just looking through my schedule. SEO was my March, April focus, and I had bought a SEO for blog course. I took a uh, what is it, Udemy, I think, or maybe it was Skillshare or one of those online learning platforms. I took their SEO course. The Udemy course was absolutely boring, super logistical, full of jargon, did not make it interactive in any way. Liz's blog SEO workbook, though, was amazing, um, super interactive, super digestible, learned more in that than I did in any of the other things I was studying and reading up on. Um, Everyone should check her out. Her podcast is Let's Talk Copy. You can find her on socials, Let's Talk Copy. I'll link her in the show notes. So on my journey to SEO, I found a TikTok account where I would need to look up her name. I'll put it in the show notes because I'm going to find her. She did a 14-day challenge on SEO, bettering your SEO, like understanding SEO. And I was watching her content because I was getting ready to do marketing advice from marketing audits, which was the series I used to kick off my new TikTok account. It's at Philly Day. I change all my handles to be the same. (laughs) Um, But so basically in April, I was digesting this girl's SEO content. And I started to see a pattern in what she was saying and what I do as a content marketer already. And just a gap in the general content pillars that are taught to business owners and to content marketers. So for an overview, we're all taught that content pillars are something everyone should have, three to five, these kind of vague topics that you know, you're going to use to create content off of. So let's say you're a holistic nutritionist. So one of your content pillars will be nutrition, And one of your content pillars will be 
maybe exercise routines. And then your third content pillar could be like mindset around health and nutrition. You like get the picture of where I'm going. They're very vague categories or buckets or whatever you want to call these content pillars. And so as I learned about SEO and as I was watching this girl's TikTok series, she was talking about, I think it was, I think she talked about known for key for keywords, not topics in the same way that I do, but it was, Basically, the premise is that if you put together the keywords you want to rank for and then the long form keywords and the short or key phrases and the short key words that are attached to that, you're going to come up with your known for topics and it's going to help you create more content for your blog, for your website to drive that SEO traffic because you're going to hit all of the keywords within one giant keyword. I hope this makes sense. I'm using so many hand gestures and you can't see them. <laughs> um, but so that explanation and that breakdown like switched something in my brain where I was like, this is what's missing from content pillars. This is what's missing in people's content marketing is knowing they're known for topics. And especially now that SEO is taking over TikTok and Instagram, and obviously it already had Pinterest and YouTube, but like SEO is creeping into the social media platforms where it didn't used to be there. It used to be hashtags. And so now knowing this concept of known for topics is going to change the way you create content and it's going to stop you. It's going to prevent you from having that spin out that we currently have around creating content, right? Because you know what people come to you for and you know what's within your content pillars. This is the problem with the general, I talk about nutrition. I say, okay, what about nutrition? What about it? Do you talk about what to buy in the grocery store? Do you talk about macro tracking? Do you talk about fasting? Do you talk about intermittent? Do you talk about, like I'm not in the nutrition space as you can tell, um, <laughs> but like having these known for topics narrows down the specific parts of your content pillar of your overarching pillar that you speak about to the point where it's like, if I want to make a post, if I want to activate someone, if I want to trigger purchasing my one-on-one, -on -one, okay, I want you to buy my one-on-one -on -one nutrition plan. I'm going to tell you why I don't believe in macro tracking. Your known for topics could be like, stop the fad diets and how to read grocery store labels and I don't know I I shouldn't have picked nutrition this is not my my forte I should have written notes before but you get the picture if you're talking about reading grocery store labels you can always come back to it you can always share when you're in the grocery store of reading labels of this is what to look for this is what to flag if you talk about Ditching fad diets, there is always another fad diet to cover. You can always say, this is why I don't believe in intermittent fasting and holistic nutrition is better. This is why I don't believe in tracking your macros and holistic nutrition is better. Yeah. Yeah. I feel so powered up just talking about this. <laughs> and finding your known for topics isn't as hard as you think it's going to be because you already have data. You're already creating content. You're already out there doing your thing. You already have an opinion on your industry, or at least I hope you do. And so taking that opinion, like for me, it's feel good marketing. I do not believe in should marketing. And so when I talk about feel good marketing, I can talk about what is feel good marketing, how to market with your energy, how to fall in love with marketing. But we can also turn to your opinion, turn to your unpopular opinion, your polarizing thoughts of what makes you different in your industry. And that will also be what you become known for. That will also be what people come to you for. So I hope I piqued your interest in known for marketing. I hope this has a little, little fire under your behind to figure it out. If you want support, if you are like, yeah, this is it, you're speaking my language, how how do I get started? Head to the show notes. I've dropped the link for my Black Friday waitlist. You have until the 20th of November. Yes, you have until the 20th of November to sign up for the waitlist. And from there, 
you will be able to purchase access to the Known For Topics workshop, which is going to be an interactive 60-minute workshop. I'm wondering if I should make it 90 minutes, but I'm just going to tell you to block out extra time. Um, and we are going to dive deep into Known For Topics, what it is, how to use them, and how to find yours. And we're going to brainstorm together. I've, I've had a formulated Google Sheets template made for all of you so that we can go over it together on the workshop and identify your known four topics. And literally on the call, we're going to start mapping out content you can create based on these topics. Once you figure out these topics and what you want to be known for, because we're not just doing like what you think is popular and trending. That's why I want to talk about data and your opinions, because I want it to be things you actually want to talk about, right? So once you identify that, once we identify that on the call, ooh, ooh, child, shit's about to get good. So head to the link in the bio. Nope. Head to the show notes. <laughs> okay, so head to the show notes, sign up for the wait list. Doors open to the waitlist only on the 21st of November. When I open the doors on Black Friday, the price is going to increase because I am that kind of person that I'm a little bit like, fuck Black Friday, but a little bit like I love a good cash injection, sales energy. Let's make it fun. Let's make it enjoyable for us. Join the waitlist to get the best price possible and never spin out over what to say in your content again. Oh, wait, before you skip to the next episode, I wanted to share with you the details of our very exciting podcast launch giveaway. I have two ways that you can enter. The first is rate, review, send me a screenshot at info at fellyday.com. The second way is your stereotypical share to Instagram and tag me at fellyday and at fellies fishbowl. The accounts will be linked in the show notes, but you will need to tag at least one of them to be entered into the giveaway or send me the screenshot so that I know and can track your entries. If you do both, two entries. Um, the five winners of this giveaway will be invited to a private group marketing workshop where we're going to discuss a feel-good marketing strategy and how everyone can start the new year with a marketing strategy that they can get their energy behind. That's it. That's all. Let's get to the outro. And that's all I have for you for this episode. If you enjoyed listening, please leave a review, rate, subscribe, whatever it is that your listening platform tells you to do for the shows that you love. If you head down to the show notes, you will find links to follow us on Instagram at Belly Day and at Belly Fishbowl. I've also added the link to sign up for my workbook, 10 Alternative Ways to Market, for all of you who are looking for new ways to market your business in a feel-good way, trust me, it's a good one. And please, if you've been listening and want to share the show, tag us. I love to see what everyone's listening to and what's resonating with you the most. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Catch soon.